Good morning. My name is Stephen Hawking, and I am very pleased to be addressing you at the Kwan Hang Forum, celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Kwan Hang newspaper. I have visited Seoul before, and greatly enjoyed the warm hospitality of the Korean people. It is an honor to open this conference, which promises to be an exciting opportunity to discuss the future of science and technology, topics which are very close to my heart. However, we cannot talk about the future without discussing the people to whom it matters most. By that, I mean the next generation, your children and mine, my grandchildren, and all the other school-age students out there, and what they will need to equip them for life in the 21st century. Korea is a world leader in science and technology and education, and I congratulate you on understanding the importance of a scientifically literate population. Over my lifetime, I have seen very significant changes. When I started my career as a scientist in the 1960s, cosmology was an obscure and unrespectable branch of scientific study. Today, through theoretical work and experimental triumphs such as the Large Hadron Collider, and the discovery of the Higgs boson, cosmology has opened the universe up to us. There are big questions still to answer, and much work lies ahead. But we know more now, and have achieved more in this relatively short space of time, than anyone could have imagined. We have answered some of the big questions, but others remain. But what lies ahead for those who are young now? I can say with confidence that their future will depend more greatly on science and technology than any previous generations has done. They need to know about science more than any before them, because it is part of their daily lives in an unprecedented way. Without speculating too wildly, there are trends we can see, and emerging problems that we know must be dealt with now and into the future. Among these, I count global warming, finding space and resources for the increase in the Earth's population, extinction of other species, the need to develop renewable energy sources, the degradation of the oceans, deforestation, 
an epidemic diseases, just to name a few. There are also the great inventions of the future, which will revolutionize the ways we live, work, eat, communicate and travel. There is such enormous scope for innovation in every area of life. This is exciting. We could be mining rare metals on the moon, establishing a human outpost on Mars, and finding cures and treatments for conditions which currently offer no hope. The huge questions of existence still remain unanswered. How did life begin on Earth? What is consciousness? Is there anyone out there, or are we alone in the universe? These are questions for the next generation to work on. We have a role to play in making sure this generation has not just the opportunity, but the wish to engage fully with the study of science at an early level, so that they can go on to fulfill their potential and create a better world for the whole human race. We need to take this beyond the theoretical discussion of how things should be, and take action to make sure they have the opportunity to get on board. I now hand you over to my daughter Lucy, to tell you about the work we have done together, to open the doorway for the scientists of the future. Thank you for listening. <laughs>